Navy will christen the future USS Zumwalt tomorrow with a ceremony at the General Dynamics Bath Ironworks in Maine. Navy officials say the Zumwalt class destroyer represents the next generation of multi-mission combatants, providing access to open ocean, littoral and ashore. Navy Secretary Ray Mabus will deliver the ceremony's main address. Zumwalt is expected to join the fleet in 2016. The U.S. Navy's second Zumwalt class, DDG-1000, destroyer successfully completed acceptance trials late last week on February 1, according to the Naval Sea Systems Command, NAVSIA. With acceptance trials completed, the massive nearly 15,000-ton future USS Michael Monsoor, DDG-1001, is set to be delivered to the Navy in March. The United States Navy is set to formally commission its first DDG-1000 stealth destroyer into service this Saturday as USS Zumwalt in Baltimore, MD. The national interest was among a select group of publications that was afforded an opportunity to tour the futuristic new vessel and talk to its crew. Though the Navy is only building three of the 15,500-ton warships the new vessels are pioneering technologies that represent the future of the surface fleet. While Zumwalt is being commissioned on Saturday, the ship will not be ready for war for some time yet. The next steps for Zumwalt and her crew will be to conduct testing and additional trials before heading to San Diego where workers will complete building her combat systems. Until the yard in San Diego completes work on Zumwalt, the vessel will not be combat ready. Navy officials serving on board are uncertain if Zumwalt will be able to support the SM-3 and SM-6 variants of the standard missile though her MK-57 advanced vertical launch system tubes can physically hold the weapons. One of the reasons the Navy dropped plans to build additional DDG-1000 destroyers was because the ship's SPY-3 X-band multifunction radar is not capable of performing the anti-ballistic missile defense role. However, the ship will be able to launch Tomahawk cruise missile, evolved Sea Sparrow missiles, standard SM-2S, and anti-submarine rockets from its AD missile tubes. However, Zumwalt's main armament is a pair of 155mm naval artillery pieces which can lob GPS-guided shells at ranges of 63 nautical miles. The ship carries over 600 rounds of 155mm ammo. Zumwalt and her sisters though they are multi-role ships were originally designed primarily as land attack vessels and to support marine landings during amphibious operations. In addition to her two massive artillery pieces which are usually concealed to maintain stealth Zumwalt is armed with a pair of MK4630 mm cannons for short-range self-defense. The idea behind Zumwalt was to build a ship that could approach the enemy's littoral waters and survive. Thus, the ship was designed with stealth in mind, Kirk described the ship as having 1 50th of the radar cross-section RCS, of a DDG-51 which itself has 1 50th of the Ticonderoga-class missile cruiser. It also has a host of other signature reduction measures in terms of infrared and acoustics, Kirk said. Navy officials have previously suggested that Zumwalt has the RCS of a fishing boat. Unlike previous warships, Zumwalt uses an integrated power system, IPS. It uses gas turbines to generate roughly 78 megawatts of electrical power. That electrical power is used to propel the warship using advanced induction motors, AIM. Kirk described the ship as sailing like a souped-up sport utility vehicle. It rides marvelously, Kirk said. Zumwalt also has a large hangar bay and a large flight deck with room for a pair of MH60R Seahawks or one MH60R and three vertical takeoff drones. Indeed, a mock-up of a Northrop Grumman MQ-8C Fire Scout was on prominent display on the flight deck during the National Interests visit. Below decks, the ship has a launch bay for a pair of 11M Rigid Hull Inflatable Boats, RHIB, and single 7M RHIB according to the officer who was guiding the tour. Zumwalt is roughly one-third larger than the Arleigh Burke class, DDG-51, but her crew complement is only 147 sailors. Unlike previous generation warships, Zumwalt and her sisters Michael Monsoor and Lyndon B. Johnson are highly automated and use a completely new type of computer architecture. Indeed, 
the bridge which has room for six watch officers looked like a set from a science fiction movie. DDG-1001 performed exceedingly well during acceptance trials, Captain Kevin Smith, DDG-1000 Class Program Manager for Navzia's Program Executive Office, PEO, Ships, said in a statement. The industry and Navy team worked together to incorporate lessons learned from DDG-1000. The trials once again demonstrated how truly powerful and exceptional these ships are. According to Navzia, U.S. Navy's Board of Inspection and Survey, INSERV, reviewed Michael Monsor and its crew during a series of demonstrations both pier-side and underway. The idea was to evaluate the ship's construction and ensure that the ship complies with Navy specifications. In the particular case, the ship seems to have exceeded expectations. Many of the ship's onboard systems including navigation, damage control, mechanical, electrical, combat, communications, and propulsion systems were tested to validate performance met or exceeded Navy specifications, Navzia said in a statement. General Dynamics Bath Iron Works, which built the massive destroyer, was also pleased. The performance of Michael Monsoor, DDG-1001, during acceptance trials demonstrated the capabilities of this ship and the men and women who built it, Bath Iron Works President Dirk Lesko said. The results are a credit to the cooperation that exists between BIW and its U.S. Navy and industry partners. With Michael Monsoor set for delivery in the coming months, BIW is currently building the last of three DDG 1000s that the Navy ordered. The future USS Lyndon B. Johnson, DDG 1002, is currently under construction at the yard. However, given the sheer expense of the DDG 1000 class and its lack of certain ballistic missile defense capabilities not to mention a number of outmoded technologies on board the Navy opted not to continue building the Zumwalt class. The three ship class has cost the Navy 23 billion dollars, with each ship coming in at roughly 4.25 billion dollars per vessel when research and development is not factored in. In the medium term, the future of the Navy's surface fleet lies with the new Flight 3 Arleigh Burke, DDG-51, class destroyer which BIW will start building starting with DDG-126 and DDG-127. Meanwhile, DDG-51 class ships Thomas Hudner, DDG-116, Daniel Inouye, DDG-118, Carl M. Levin, DDG-120, and John Bassalone, DDG-122, are currently under various stages of construction at BIW.